Hello and welcome to Real Voices of Happy Valley, episode about ten, I think. Uh, and we've just we've just got back from Chris Ratcliffe's office, uh, where we've been talking to him about um, Pennine Pens, Hebweb, books about Sylvia Plath, and Anne Lister, and Anne Lister, and. Uh, we see realised how far ahead of the curve he's been all along with yeah. getting into online forums and online news online news community newspapers. Um this really great so anyway, Viv did most of the talking, so let's uh, take it away, Viv. So uh, we're sitting in a lovely office in Windsor Road, uh, high up in the house belonging to Chris Ratcliffe who is pretty much a one-man band when it comes <laughs> well, to days, all yeah. things written. <laughs> you, so, Chris, hi. Hi, uh, You have um, Pennine Pens, which... Is, was that your first kind of enterprise? When you yeah, came? yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, we started it in the early 90s, I suppose, with the publication of the first book, mm. uh, which was... Uh, Cycling in search of the Qatars, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we just tried to make up a name, and Pennine Pens seemed to have a ring to it. it. Does. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and once you once you've got it, you're stuck with it, of course. So you had like a background of teaching before then. Did oh, you? I've got a, a very varied background. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a lost decade, like uh, a lot of um, you know, in the seventies, <laughs> where I did all sorts of things, from working in factories to farm work to doing market stalls. Uh, getting very involved in uh, community politics and uh, right. loads of stuff like that yeah but in uh, in the yeah so yeah perhaps one thing I ought to say is that when I was a student it was an exciting time to be a student that's perhaps another topic um, but uh, I did set up with a friend an alternative student newspaper right um, and this was at a time when there were hardly any alternative papers. There was International Times, and that was about it. It was before Oz and before all the other ones came along. And so it was quite pioneering. Uh, and so it, yeah, we got ourselves into hot water. There were questions in the House of Parliament. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was 1968. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Historic uh, year. And then in... Uh, um, in the 70s I did something similar when I was living in Hackney and squatting and involved in the claimants union and uh, various other uh, activities and um, and we created the Hackney Gutter Press <laughs> and I can remember to this day spending hours in the basement of our squat with cow gum and Letraset and because that's the way you had to do it in yeah. those days. But yeah. so that you know that was and kind of a, a guest <laughs> yeah. well, no, 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 we had it. Oh, oh no, no, it was all professionally printed. But oh, you had right. to do the layout, you see, and yeah. in order to do the layout, you need Letraset and then you mm -hmm. stick the bits of type on with. Uh, Oh, come. <laughs> that sounds more professional than us. We had a let <laughs> we had a gestetna, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, we, 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 you know, all these were, were very, yeah. I'm, I've got, I've still got them here in various boxes, but, um, uh, yeah, no, I was, I, I still remain reasonably proud of them. Yeah. Mm. Well, I was going to say, you know, before it takes us off onto a different direction. Yeah. It's brilliant that you started off doing that, and now you do websites. And well, yeah, that, that's why I mentioned things, it because there's yeah. a kind of link, you know, mm. um, because that was kind of a community newspaper. The Head Web is probably in, you know, if I if the internet had been round then, that's mm. maybe what I'd have been doing. Yeah, yeah, but it's impressive that you can <laughs> kind of embrace that, having gone through the old school of it. So um, yeah, so you came here. Well, I in... first moved here in 75, um, but I was a bit coming and going because uh, I lived in a truck a lot of the time and was going off around festivals doing um, harvest work and going mm. to France and Denmark and doing wow. market stalls and things. So, But I, I had to come back here for the winters. and uh, uh, But then, the, I mean, the end of the 70s was a kind of, um, it was a growing darkness, if you remember. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Uh, 
I decided, okay. uh, yeah, and wages weren't going up, uh, and uh, you know, it was getting harder and harder to, to find work because there were so many unemployed, and uh, mm. so I decided that's the time to do my PGCE. That, that's when we left Liverpool. Yes. <laughs> Thatcher abolished work. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Declared it a job for yeah, his own. But, yeah. yeah, but so you came here? Round yeah, about yeah I time. came back to Hebden Bridge. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd been here quite a lot in, in the late 70s. You know, moved, mm. first moved here in 75. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but then, you know, in 81, uh, you know, I came here and started working at Calderdale College and, met, and that's where I met Elaine. And... Uh, yeah, so... Um, so the two of you set yeah. up pen yeah. and pens? Yeah, and yeah, it took us yeah. a little while, but um, towards the end of the 80s, that's... We did... Well, come about 1986-7, we're both a bit tired of teaching, and mm. um, we, just, we decided we'd take a break uh, for a year, and... Uh, so we applied for the enterprise allowance. Remember oh, that? I remember <laughs> that? Yeah. Some things were actually more progressive. <laughs> yeah, than they yeah. Are now, weren't they? yeah. They should bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, which was a government grant for people who don't know, uh, for yeah. people who were unemployed but had a business idea. Mm. And our business idea was to write a book about medieval heretics in southwest France and go. Of course, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and go cycling around the area for several months. Yeah. Great idea. <laughs> and you got paid. Was it forty quid a week? It Did was, you get in those yeah, days? Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. yeah. So you got some money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And so we both got that and. Um, mm. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and we went round and had a nice, <laughs> nice break in the sunny mm. uh, times, and uh, out of that came out our first book. Yeah. And did did that do well? Yeah, it? surprisingly, yeah. it's um, yeah, it's uh, more than covered its costs. We made money out of it, and uh, so that inspired us really to uh, to look at other options. And Elaine was doing Elaine was a kind of great um fan, I don't know, fan so more than a fan. Um she she was pretty mad on Sylvia Plath. Oh right. And um she had been from way before Sylvia Plath was really that well known. Mm. And um and so she she was finishing up her MA and her thesis was on uh, Plath and we decided to turn that into a book and uh, mm. and that's what we did and uh, and that even even though it didn't get, I mean, the Qatar book got quite a lot of publicity. Um, uh, we managed to get it into all sorts of different places, and but the, we couldn't do the same with the Sylvia Plath book. But it it sold very well, um, mm. and um, it's been reprinted uh, two or three times. And there's an e-book, and um, and yeah, uh, jumping forward a bit there. It it was um, we when we started doing internet pages um, websites uh, we created the the Sylvia Plath forum which Elaine administered and um, and so it was we think it was probably the first arena of literary discussion on the internet oh, uh, oh, and you know yeah. we had hundreds of messages and uh, mm. people from all around the world and people started coming to um, Hebden Bridge in the UK really just to see and meet Elaine wow <laughs> and uh, so um, that must have felt fantastic it was her it, it gave you. her you yeah. know and you know by yeah. the time she died in 2007 mm. um, she was probably the leading expert on on Plath, you know, uh, she could, and also she had an amazing memory, so she could um, recite the poems and tell all the anecdotes and little bits of information. She was great at telling anecdotes, and uh, so you know, mm. if she were here now, and it's a shame she's not. Well. Yeah, she'd have us all like, laughing our heads off. <laughs> <laughs> I remember learning a lovely Sylvia Plath poem which was about um, an unborn baby and yeah. it was saying you you know your head's like a pumpkin and it's weighing down on me you know from the point of view of the yeah, yeah. mother yeah and um I, f I forget what it was from halloween to easter or whatever you yeah. know for the nine months 
and it it wasn't immediately obvious that's what it was about but, oh, when right, you, yeah, but yeah. yeah I must look, yeah you've inspired me now to look to <laughs> well, look it up yeah. when I get back yeah yeah, sure. yeah well, I mean I, I think I I finally shared her enthusiasm for platters when I heard her reciting her poems I mean they're mm. so powerful when you hear her voice reading mm. them. yeah yeah um, and the local connection, yeah, obviously, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buried in Hepton mm, Storm, yeah. was married to Ted Hughes, wasn't she? Absolutely, yeah. I'm yeah. also interested in the, the local connection with Jill Livington and Anne Lister. Right, so oh, yeah. after we published the, the second book, um, Jill, who was a friend, uh, um, her partner, Julian Harbour, he and I were at... Uh, university together so mm. um we've, we've known each other quite a long time but um uh she she approached us and asked us if we'd like to do this book on Anne Lister I, I kind of knew about Anne Lister be, well I won't go into all the reasons why but um uh um so anyway we jumped at the chance because um Jill was a, a nationally known and respected uh, feminist historian and uh you know, it would be a real feather in our hats, as it were. So before then, you'd written the books yourselves. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah. Cycling yeah, and on Sylvia yeah, Plath. I, so was this your first? Yeah, sort of taking I think it author? was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we were so, we were gradually getting approached by other writers, and uh, yeah. they, <laughs> I mean, at, at times too many. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, there was the time we arrived back on a from work, and there was this. Dis dishevelled creature uh, <laughs> with a pile of poems in his boulder standing on our doorstep. You know? <laughs> uh, Did you say, go away, Ted Hughes? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, yeah, I think so. And it, it was, um, it was quite, um, quite a task because uh, Jill is, um, she knows what she wants and it has to be laid out absolutely as she wants it and mm -hmm. um, which you know I kind of you know endorse yeah but yeah it, it meant loads of footnotes and trying to work out I mean we're in the early days of um, desktop publishing so you mm -hmm. know working out how to do the footnotes and making them continue on it was all kind of quite challenging uh, but yeah I mean yeah yeah uh, but it, I mean, it it kind of sold enough. It covered its costs, and we had it reprinted, and you know, it carried on just about covering its costs. So, what was that book? Was that that was called Presenting the Past, and right. what it did is it looked at how Anne Lister had been perceived by different generations o over a period over history. So she, she's she's right. kind of looking at it as a historian and uh, um, seeing how. So it wasn't actually, it did tell the story a bit, but um, it was mainly looking at um, how, how she was uh, understood by the different, um, in the different times. Mm, and was it Jill who deciphered her diaries? Um, she did. Yeah, I think, mm. oh God, you've got me there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should be asking Jill. Yeah, no, I, I, I should know. I don't think she was the only one. I think no, somebody no. else yeah. did mm. that or was heavily yeah. involved yeah. in that. Yeah. I think she has. I think she has. I, I know Jill wouldn't take credit for anybody else's work anyway. So yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll find an answer to that. I, yeah. I, I ought to know. Well, very closely <laughs> written. A bit like the Brontes. You know. <laughs> Tiny writing and, uh, you know, difficult mm -hmm. to follow. But yeah, so that must have been a huge success, you know. Well, it was, cat, a, it, though, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it yeah. kind of established us, it gave us a reputation. And uh, um, as I say, other people started approaching us. Um, but mm. um, quite soon after that, uh, um, yeah, the internet kind of came along. Mm. And uh, I mean, in the 70s, I've been a bit of a Luddite about IT and technology, but when I was a teacher, um, I really wanted to do the perfect worksheet for my students. Mm. It was something I kind of really enjoyed doing, and uh, and obviously computers were uh, uh, you know I didn't have to do the lecture set. I didn't have to yeah. use <laughs> Calcum. I, yeah. yeah, it was a, it was a 
absolutely uh, amazing and uh, and for some reason I found that I had got a bit of a knack for it and um, I could solve problems when others had mm. probably lost their patience. Mm. Well good knack to have, especially these days. So you continue with Pennine Pens over the years but then did you and Elaine start Hebweb? Right, so the internet came along. We, we initially mm. used it to publicise the books because we yeah. thought, in particular, um, the Sylvia Plath and the Qatar books would have interest worldwide. And mm. uh, so, you know, World Wide Web, let's have a go. Um, and uh, and once I'd, we'd got a few pages um, up, uh, other people started approaching me and, uh, well, and Elaine and... Uh, asking us if we could do things for them and uh, mm. I mean one of the first ones was H who was running uh, the circus factory at the time. Oh, yes I used to work with H at the green <laughs> shop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well he's, he, he inspires people doesn't he? I mean mm. he's uh, uh, anyway he, um, he he got me to do a website for them this is right early on and I mean if I were to look at it now I'd think oh my god you know <laughs> but, mm. but uh, a couple of weeks after I'd done it, um, I bumped into him in the street and he was absolutely raving about how they just got an order, this big order from Japan, you know. And oh. they, I mean, if you can imagine, before the internet, we couldn't have done that, you know. And uh, You do forget, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Just what a huge yeah, it was change a, it Such made. a change. And, uh, yeah. and of course, this was still a time when no one really, a lot of people didn't know what the internet was. Mm. It was growing. Um, and fortunately in Hebden Bridge because of the kind of the nature of the people that tended to be drawn here they a lot of them did have that vision that uh, of what it was going to become mm. and so that's when the um, it was around that time that I thought well why don't we do, do a website for Hebden Bridge you know and, uh, well, <laughs> so, uh, Heb Webb was born <laughs> yeah it is a, an amazing um can't think of the word thing. <laughs> but no, that it's in that it's kind of civilized conversation, but people still say what they want to say as yeah. long as you know. I mean, yeah. do you have guidelines? Yeah, for... there's guidelines on 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 the discussion forum, and yeah. and they they have been derived from lots of <laughs> heart searching because mm. at the beginning. All the problems that uh, social media have had in the last few years, mm. I had with the Heb Hebweb Forum right at the beginning, or we, I should say we had because Elaine was still around. Mm. And, um, uh, you know, people kind of, ordinary civilised people that I would be having a conversation like this with mm. <laughs> would kind of start going off and attacking people personally and all this kind of thing. And mm. I'd say, you know, and I'd say, no, I can't publish that. You know, I'm not going to mm. put that up. And they they get quite offended and call it censorship and things like that. Uh, um, so yeah, gradually, I I, I mean, uh, I, I had to create some guidelines, and they hadn't. I mean, now it's quite clear that it's quite acceptable to stop posts that are, are, are like that. But at the time. People yeah. expected them to to, um, mm. and I, I mean, at the very beginning, I tried to. <laughs> I tried doing it live, you know, without my, any kind of moderation, um, you know, being the old hippie that I am. Yeah. <laughs> you soon learned. <laughs> <laughs> so on a Friday night, uh, you'd, you, I'd wake up on a Saturday morning, and they'd come back, uh, they grabbed a whole load of um, code from porn sites and just pasted oh. it in. Oh. <laughs> 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 so yeah, couldn't but do I it think live. People, I, I know social media can be a bit horrible, and people say things they wouldn't dream of saying yeah. face to face. Yeah. But on the head web, somehow, it, I, I mean, unless... well, that's because I don't post them. You see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, mm. I mean, over the recent debates uh, that mm. uh, over the trans issue, the, the you know, there's um, been heated opinions, as we know, mm. and. Um, you know some of the posts where you know from both sides where I, I thought no no you're not you're not going to attack someone else mm. as a person you can disagree with their 
points mm. of view, but it, it doesn't have to get personalised. So I, you mm. know, I just don't do it. Mm. But the ones that do go, they still manage to get all the views yeah, across, but exactly. they're, they're not yeah. hateful or yeah. nasty. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's so the way I think discussion should be. Um, yeah. You know, because ultimately, and uh, you know, we're jumping the gun here a bit, but ultimately, if we can't talk to each other civilly about our different points of view, Mm. then what hope is there that you know we're going to have a, a, a peaceful world yeah <laughs> oh a nice bit of philosophy <laughs> yeah. yeah so um where do you see Hebweb go I, is, is it just you now running it yourself do you yeah have yeah help? but you see I mean I have so many people sending me things mm. you know uh, so anyone who wants to publicize, publicize an event anyone that's got any news they generally, not everybody, but generally, they send me the info and they want it on, on yeah, so that makes it easy, really, I mean, but mm. o obviously, the, the, there's a whole area of questions about how, how it's going to be in the future, how it's going to develop, and uh, mm. I haven't got the answers to that. <laughs> but it's quite good, really. <laughs> <laughs> but if we, go, if we go back to just after the head web um, was, uh, and... Yeah, so so there's, there's two more things. I I mean, I don't know how much time we've got, but <laughs> no, we've got another five minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's two things I'd probably like to talk about. That is the view from the bridge, and then yeah. gentleman Jack. Okay. So, view from the bridge. We started off as a weekly column. Well, it wasn't. It was a regular column. It came about once a week um, on on the head web, and it was written by. Uh, someone you may know, John Morrison. Yeah, and um, and it was it was funny, and it had a lot, a lot, lots of people were just coming to the web just to read the view from the bridge, which is you know kind mm -hmm. of what was good for us, and um, uh, so it being so popular, we decided, even though the copies were all there online, all the episodes, uh, we decided to publish um, a book. And uh, uh, and that became one of our more successful books as well. Well, we bought it, didn't we? Not knowing you, not knowing <laughs> yeah, yeah. him, d because we'd recently moved here. So, yeah, one of the things that happened, I mean, uh, is that uh, Izzy Shannon, the local journalist she was working for the Hebden Times, wrote a review of it. Mm. And um, I mean, I perhaps ought to, you know, say that, um, uh, you know, something a, a little bit about it, because not everyone will know. It, it kind of was an affectionate piss take of Hebden Bridge. Yeah. And uh, had like uh, characters uh, such as um, Wounded Man, <laughs> Willow <laughs> Woman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, he used to play Scrabble was town, wounded. Man. Yeah, well, <laughs> everybody thought they knew <laughs> who yeah, it was, yeah. and it was always someone different. Um, uh, town drunk. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, 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 Councillor Prattle. Yeah, and more, yeah. yeah. So. Um, I remember sitting in the <laughs> trades club reading about reading the page where it went on to, about this bar called the Flag, yeah, which is, yeah. <laughs> where radical things happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously not the trades club. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the um, so one thing, the first thing to mention is that uh, Issy Shannon had, had written this review, and uh, just before it was going to publication, the editor of the Hebden Times pulled it. Oh. because she I well, we don't really know but um, it, it was thought that she didn't like some of the um, references to local newspapers I mean Hebden Bridge wasn't mentioned by name in the same way no. as uh, no. certain other Milton, people Milton <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's right mm -hmm. so um, uh, yeah but there was a kind of reference to lunchtime old booze the local journalist you know yes. things like that I mean it's, you couldn't imagine that it was going to offend <laughs> anyone really but she she pulled it and um uh and and so we were able to put posters all over town saying the book they banned <laughs> <laughs> brilliant publicity yeah. <laughs> was it him who had the pretend headlines yeah that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> man creosotes prevents yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
bus line, bus, <laughs> bus, bus timetable time stays the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, well, well done for getting <laughs> for publishing those. Well, one books. other little anecdote about it is that um, we were sitting here one afternoon, me and Elaine, and um, uh, and we got a call from Four Boys. Oh the, yeah, the yeah, news yeah, agents. Yeah. News yeah. agents who, 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 who were were stocking the book, and um, uh, and someone had come in claiming to be Biker Dave. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so Nigel from Poor Boys phoned us up to warn us right. <laughs> that he'd given him our address and he, he was on his way. <laughs> Just put the phone down and we heard the kind of roar of this Harley Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elaine got on the phone to John to see if he would like to come over and talk to him and he said no way I'll be under the bed <laughs> and, and I said well look I, I think this is probably best handled by a woman <laughs> and nipped upstairs <laughs> so um, yeah so did Elaine handle it well then yeah, yeah. her teacher school skills came into good use uh, yeah. but I mean she's written a, there's a lot I could say about that this episode it's very funny and she's written about it and uh, yeah yeah so yeah that so that was um it was good fun really uh doing it doing those. we did three books in the end mm. and uh they still they still sell yeah so yeah. so yeah. they're still available then yeah yeah still available. <laughs> um and the other thing that you know perhaps I should uh, just say is that uh, um, Gentleman Jack oh yeah so that kind of so that's Jill Lidding yeah we well. had these two books mm -hmm. that we'd published nearly 30 well yeah 25 years previously and you know mm -hmm. uh, 15 years previously and uh, and suddenly um, Sally Wainwright was doing this series and she was basing it on two of Jill's books, one of which we'd published. Wow. And it got credited on the um, on each episode of the first series and uh, and we got a deal with the production company. Great. Um, and then um, the, the sales of the books just went absolutely mad, both the printed copies and the e-books. Mm. And, you know, we, as I uh, said, I think earlier, um, yeah, you know, in the two or three years that followed Gentleman Jack, we sold uh, over 5,000 copies of Jill's books on and Lister, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I, Fantastic, you know yeah. I can't think of another book mm. produced locally that has done that many copies. Well, mm. that's fantastic. It fits in really well with our real voices of Happy Valley as well, because yeah. Sally's local yeah yeah that's anyway, right. Jill's mm. local and Lister was down the road <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then and, 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 and between then, them they've brought Anne Lister's voice to life yeah I think yeah mm. uh, and then the, you know the, the, the I mean I was thinking when you were saying about I mean the Hebweb although it's kind of commercial it makes a bit of money but basically it's always been our commitment to Hebden Bridge and mm. to try and do something back, you know. Mm. And you, oh, it's a nice place to wrap up because <laughs> you've done that brilliantly to give back to it to the place that you made your home. And um, and thank you. Well, thanks for, for to us. thanks for talking yeah. to me. Thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. It's yeah. great sitting here having a listen to you both. So, there you go. Uh, if you found that interesting, want to hear any of our others, uh, click on the little button that says like or follow, and depending on which podcast platform you're listening to us on. Also check out our Real Voices of Happy Valley Facebook page. And uh, if you want to find out more about any of the books that Chris and Elaine published at Pennine Pens, it's very simple, penninepens.co.uk. Now, as part of all that, Viv mentioned a poem by Sylvia Plath, but couldn't remember all the words of it as we were going through the interview. Uh, so here it is, Viv. Your, your clown-like, happiest on your hands, feet to the stars and moon sculled, gilled like a fish, a common sense thumbs down on the dodo's mode, wrapped up in yourself like a spool, trawling your dark as owls do. 
Mute as a turnip from the 4th of July to All Fool's Day. Oh, high riser, my little loaf. Vague as fog and looked for like mail. Further off than Australia. Bent backed atlas, our travelled prawn. Snug as a bud and at home like a sprat in a pickle jug. A creel of eels, all ripples, jumpy as a Mexican bean. Right like a well done sum. A clean slate with your own face on. (laughs) 